Living in an apartment or a confined space within an urban environment is one of the biggest challenges people face when it comes to being prepared. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how much food you need on hand before you actually bug out from that apartment setting, considering in many ways it might be your only option. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper. Today we're talking about how much food you need on hand if you live in an apartment or in a major city and you know that bugging out might be a necessity for you during a full on SHTF scenario. This is not a conversation about your average crisis. We're talking about a full grid down collapse situation where you know things are going to be very desperate very quickly. And this could happen in a very short amount of time based on whatever scenario were to arise. And if you're worried about preparing for those types of scenarios and you live in an apartment setting, then hit the subscribe button below because hopefully these videos can help give you some ideas about what you should be thinking about and what you should be preparing for based on your location. Now, there is always going to be something to be said for having more food on hand. The most you can have is always going to be the best. However, a lot of that might end up being wasted if you find yourself in a situation where bugging out is the most likely option. And in general, we preach bugging in here in the preparedness community because staying where you are, where you have access to your supplies, you have security, you have a right to be where you are, all those things are definitely a benefit during an emergency scenario. But I think we all know that during a full on collapse of society, when SHTF has gone full blown, if you're in an apartment in a major population center, you do have to leave at some point in time. You're going to have to get more resources and the people around you are going to become more and more dangerous as time goes on. And this is why I figured I would put this video out to give people something to actually shoot for rather than always just throwing out the idea that, well, the most you can have is the best or the more the better. Well, of course, that's easy to say. You can say that about anything when it comes to preparedness. The more backup power options you have, the better. The more water you have stored the better but at the end of the day we're all confined based on space budget and everything else that we have to plan on when it comes to being prepared so what i would tell you and this is my thought process and i want you to kind of give me some ideas about what it is that you have going on in your personal situation but if you're in an apartment you're limited on space okay you should be focused on your plans about an shtf crisis and how they revolve around the idea of bugging out because leaving that urban population center is probably going to be your best bet, especially when talking about a full on SHTF scenario. And what I have here on the table is two weeks worth of food for one person. And this is two weeks so that you can have a visual idea about how much food that really is. This is easy to store. It doesn't take up much space. It was very inexpensive as well. It's easy to eat, at least with the oats, all you need to do is add water, which you're going to need more of than food in all honesty. But at the end of the day two weeks is exactly what you can shoot for to start with because it gets you enough time to ride out the initial onslaught of whatever emergency might arrive and at the same time gives you an expiration date for your location now why am i saying an expiration date for your location well if you're in an apartment and you're in a major population center the people around you are going to become desperate very very fast and this will happen exponentially as time goes on they'll become more desperate every single day that there's not additional aid coming their way and that there's not more food coming their way and what will happen and this is just based on the concept of how people react during emergencies, but in general, people will become desperate before you will because you have preparedness top of mind. You have items like additional food on hand and that desperation won't reach you as quickly as your next door neighbor or as the entire floor that you live on. And those people, as desperate as they are, are also going to be afraid and they will look for those additional resources that they require in their immediate area before venturing out further into more dangerous territory to find what it is that they need. And what is it that they will need? Water and then food. And so first and foremost, you have to have enough water to be able to sustain yourself for the amount of time that you have food or else that expiration date you just gave yourself is even shorter. Of course, three days without water and you're done. Whereas food, they say, you know, three weeks. But at the end of the day, you need the water to be able to even use the food that you have. And you have to have enough water to also use it to make the food like these oats right here, right? So having water is paramount. If you don't have enough water to last as long as the food you have put away, 
then it doesn't even matter about how much food you have. We're talking about a full on SHTF scenario. So as long as you have two weeks worth of water, then I would also shoot for two weeks worth of food. And the reason we're talking about two weeks is because basically if you don't bug out soon enough, if you don't bug out either before a disaster hits or right as soon as one is occurring to the point where you can leave or the roads aren't clogged or being on foot isn't quite as dangerous yet because people haven't met that level of desperation yet, then you're gonna be stuck for a minute. And two weeks is pretty much where you'd wanna be in the sense of waiting out that initial wave of disaster, but then also still leaving before things get very dire and drastic. And after a couple weeks is when even the average person, and a lot of times even the prepared person, is gonna start losing it. And we're talking about people not having basic needs met, not having water, not having food, not having medication, whatever else it might be in relation to what they need to survive, they're gonna be running out of it within two weeks or less most likely. So two weeks to me gives you enough time of a buffer to figure out that yes, I can now stay here for a minute if I need to while things cool off for a second so that I can bug out at the appropriate time or if I'm literally stuck where I am, I have this amount of food on hand which also correlates with the amount of water because two weeks worth of water stored is actually a lot of water if you're in an apartment so that's a big thing to consider but the other side of it is that it also forces you to leave at a certain point which might be important if bugging out really is the right thing for you to do my suggestion and something you should definitely consider is to find somewhere off-site that you can store additional food past that two week mark or whatever you feel that expiration date should be for you in the sense of what you have stored in your apartment in that major city. And it would be very inexpensive to rent a storage unit, an office space, some kind of um, you know room in an apartment or something like that in a small town in a surrounding area nearby for you to store additional supplies, additional food, the preps that we talk about in the sense of long-term storage. Because what you can do in your apartment is probably going to be very limited, but being in that apartment can be extremely dangerous as well. And if everyone else is desperate before you, understand that that desperation is going to lead them to do desperate things before you get into the same mindset of being willing to do what you have to do to survive and that is definitely a consideration you need to keep in mind and giving yourself that cutoff date is important in the sense of knowing ahead of time that you're going to have to bug out and that's really your only option and honestly when it comes to major population centers if you're in an apartment in that type of environment you really should probably have a bug out plan and it should be one of your primary plans and i don't usually preach that for people but in this conversation when you're talking about being surrounded by desperate people that's way more dangerous than in a situation like mine where there's not going to be a lot of people and although i may have to bug out at some point in time bugging is still definitely my best option I don't think that's always going to be the case for apartment dwellers, and I think that if you live in one, you already know that. So I wanted to have this conversation because I get this question a lot, and people ask, you know, well, I live in an apartment. What can I do? Or what should I shoot for? Or how much food should I have when I might have to leave anyway? And these are all valid points that you want to have answered. So I try my best to answer those questions for you. But the other thing to consider is that investing so much money and so much effort into storing tons and tons of food inside of an apartment with the idea in mind that you're going to be able to stay in that apartment while everyone else on your floor isn't storing food and isn't investing into preparedness um, and then expecting them not to show up at your door and eventually get desperate enough to open it is a, probably a bad idea as well so investing that money into your bug out plans might be a better way to go. And when I say that, what I mean is getting property offsite, getting that storage unit offsite, getting that rental space, an office space possibly offsite, right? Or at the very least, investing in the gear that allows you to bug out in the best way possible, AKA making sure that your equipment is top tier and high quality and it can actually make it to that bug out location that you have already decided on because without one, you're not going anywhere. These are conversations that we're trying to have to kind of give people things to think about. Leave it in the comments below if you have other ideas about the situation. Do I think staying in your apartment is oftentimes gonna be safer than risking going on foot outdoors into the middle of chaos? Of course I do. But do I think that in a full grid down SHTF scenario where everything falls apart and the idea of any type of aid coming your way is out the window, that staying in an apartment is going to work out for the long term and be a good idea? 100% I don't. 
So make sure you plan accordingly. And I hope this video gave you something to shoot for, something to think about, and always remember, don't lose sight of the fact that if you don't have two weeks worth of water, then two weeks worth of food doesn't matter. And that is definitely a big one you should be thinking of as well. If you have any questions for me at all, magicpepper.com is a good place to go. And that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.